everybody's hearing the news today. Uh, the world's coming to an end. Recessions right around the corner, things like that. Today, we're going to talk about if we started investing today, what would we do in the stock market? With all that being said, Alex, hit us with the intro. <laughs> welcome, uh, welcome back, guys, to the Passive Money Plan. <laughs> Kirby threw me off there. <laughs> yeah. Got pushed. But uh, my name is Alex. That's Kirby. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be talking about what uh, Kirby and I would be doing if we started investing today. Now, just to be clear, is this like uh, with the knowledge we have today or if we're just like new beginners to the stock market? Well, no. if we if we're just new beginners, if we're new beginners, I mean, usually I do a lot of talking and then it's going to be like, well, yeah, it's easy for Kirby to say because he's been doing this for five million years. You look like a dinosaur. <laughs> but but Alex, I want to ask you. So let's just say with the knowledge, just go off the knowledge that we've talked about on this channel. Just on this channel. Don't bring in no extra knowledge or anything like that. From the stuff that we said on the channel, if you was at zero today and you, you know you had a job and things like that, and you want to get into investing, what would you do starting now? So to be completely honest, um, I think I did a lot of stock hopping. I wouldn't do that. So I would, uh, I would be more and it comes i think it comes down to just doing your homework beforehand right not doing your homework in the middle of uh you know investing so know what you're getting into do your homework study a company uh build an analysis a thesis on that company um and uh believe in it you know don't believe in it because of some crazy conspiracy or idea but actually understand what the company does and uh, keep your uh, keep your portfolio very uh, you know straightforward not so not spread your money so thin across a whole bunch of stocks and uh, I would select just like say three to five stocks and focus on building those and just cash flow and I wish I would have started investing in the S&P 500 a lot earlier honestly um, because if the end goal is to get cash flow, then the S&P 500 is a great investment vehicle to put into another investment such as uh, real estate. Um, I know I, I talk with I talk about the stock market with some people at work that have trucking uh, companies. You know, you, they could use that money to purchase another truck once they get another contract. You know, you can use S&P 500 as a vehicle to move you into the next investment while also uh, investing in uh like say dividend stocks to bring in cash flow um, or, you know, investing in a good company stock to bring in options income. So it's kind of, that's, I mean, I'm now taking that direction and I wish I would have been more, I guess you could say conservative with it before where it's just plain and simple S and P 500 stock. I'm using as an investment vehicle for real estate to bring in more cash flow uh, two stocks where I bring in options income, and then I also have Altria Group for dividend income. Something just straightforward. That's what I would do if I had to start all over again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you you're more complex than me. I'm the old guy. I feel like I feel like Warren and <laughs> being all old. Yeah. Right, so for me, uh, I'm gonna share the screen with you. Okay. Can you see it? Yes. All right, so look, so this, so this chart right here. Let me try to close some of this stuff. All right, so this chart right here for me it explains it all. This for me it explains it all, and I mean, I get, I get what you're saying. You know, going to defensive measures like the tree and stuff like that. You going with, you know, uh, options with uh, tree and, and things like that. Uh, for me, I would just keep it simple. Everybody is measured against one thing. No matter if you're a hedge fund, no matter if you're Warren Buffett, no matter if you're a mutual fund, no matter what you are, some of the best investors in the world, they, I mean, mutual fund managers, the whole thing, they're always measured against the S&P 500. And it's, and they're measured on their greatness or how they're good as a stock picker or how good they are as an investor based on what did you do in a certain time frame compared to the S&P 500. So 
for most people, 99% of the people that's watching this video and around the world, they don't have time to, you know, look at stocks and, you know, stuff like that. You know, they got jobs and all that other stuff that they're doing that, you know, they believe is more important than investing for their financial future. Uh, so if everybody's measured against the S&P 500 and you said it, why not just invest in the S&P 500? 80 to 90 percent of the fund managers in uh, mutual funds can't beat the S&P 500. Hedge fund managers, none of them can beat the S&P 500 over a 10 year span. So instead of trying to find the hot stock or something like that, just invest in, invest in the S&P 500. You can do it a couple of ways. You can invest in the SPY ETF. Uh, they got some other, you know, crazy ETFs out there. Uh, I'm not going to get into those or just vet, invest in a, a mutual, an index mutual fund that's paid to the S&P 500. Usually every 401k and every, um, you know, mutual fund package that, you know, different brokerages have, have that. But the reason why I say this is because let's just look at it here. Uh, we started back here at 1933, just if you invest in S&P 500. And every red star along this uh, uh, inclined plane here is when we had recessions. So if you invested here, if you invested in 1932, the next recession, the next recession, if you invested in 1932, in 1938, you would hit another recession. Your money still will be higher than it was in 1932. And then you can fast forward to 1945, 1949. 45 and 49 was a little bit lower, but it wasn't lower than uh, 38. But every time you see a recession, it's always higher than the previous recession for the most part. So if you just get into it and we, you know, pushing towards a recession here, according to, you know, right here in the 2020s with the COVID you know, recession. But as you see, the COVID recession was still, the bottom was still higher than the 2009 recession. So if I, this is just me and I'm old and, you know, all the cryptocurrency bulls and things out there or the hot stocks or the penny stocks and stuff, you know, they might have other stuff. But if everybody's measured against the index and they can't beat the index for the most part, you know, you have a couple out there um, you got Warren Buffett that's out there that could beat the index. You got um, the founder of Vanguard. I can't think of his name off the top of my head. You know, he beat the index. It's about three or four more people. Period. That can beat the index over a long period of time. There's only like three or four people in the world that can beat the index, the S&P 500 index over a long period of time. So I'm either, number one, I'm investing in the S&P 500 or I'm investing in something that those three gentlemen have products in. And for me, Berkshire Hathaway, B shares. If let, let's say I put 75% of my money in the S&P 500, if I just wanted to go, you know, hot stock it or one stock that I just want to take a flyer on, it would be Berkshire Hathaway over the long term. I might get a little more outperformance out of the S&P than I get, you know, anywhere else. But besides that, I'm 75% in the S&P 500, especially if I'm a novice investor, I don't I don't have the time, energy, and effort to sit there and study all the stocks. I would just go with the index, which everybody is measured against. And I would just keep it simple, keep it simple, stupid, just like that. Okay. I yeah. know mine was boring. So what you got on that? No, no, no. no. <laughs> so on that case, I would agree because it's just my fault for misunderstanding. I'm thinking of like what I would do with what I know now. And of course, it would be e it's easy for me to say that right now, understanding how to sell options and understanding that, for example, Altria Group is a dividend uh, king and understanding their dividend payout for someone that's just beginning SP 500 all the way completely um, and maybe mm -hmm. uh, Berkshire Hathaway or the NASDAQ or something. And into the, into that uh, element, if you know, people just wonder how this old dinosaur do it. And I'm saying I'm old, but I, I'm saying that sarcastically. Um, for me personally, for me, I still got, you know, a couple more days on my lifespan. So 50% of my long-term investments are S&P 500. And then the other 50% uh, is NASDAQ. Now, anybody in my house that's younger than me, which is everybody, they are... Berkshire Hathaway and 80 to 90% NASDAQ. 
And the reason being is I believe, we believe that science and technology is the future of the world. So we want to be in now and play this wave long term to take advantage of that. Yeah, if the swing's bigger in the NASDAQ than S&P 500, heck yeah. I mean, the NASDAQ's down still like 20% now, and the S&P 500's down like 12 to 15%. NASDAQ probably's down worse than that. But, um, but over a long period of time, we believe in science and technology. That's how that's going to be the future endeavors of the world. So we invest a lot in the NASDAQ 100 in my household. And then my son is 100% NASDAQ. He's eight years old. He's 100% NASDAQ 100. Um, uh, so that's just that's just how we do it. Uh, my wife, my wife's about 75% NASDAQ. Uh, yeah, she's a little younger than me, but that's that's just how we do it. I mean, of course, we have uh, portfolios in different avenues, businesses, real estate and stuff like that. But when it comes to the market itself, majority of the funds are in the NASDAQ and then s p 500 is out there and then of course we have our individual stock portfolio also but that's how we play it over the long-term horizon i like it all right with all that being said thanks y'all for tuning into the channel if you like the channel please like hit the subscribe button if you don't like the channel hit the dislike but still hit the subscribe button how about that <laughs> and uh we'll see you in the next video y'all have a good one see you guys